very warm welcome to Television Tonga's news package for tonight. Making headlines, Her Majesty Queen Mother, Laival Mataaho, and Her Royal Highness Princess Bilole Rutueta officiate at the Free Wesleyan Church Royal Call for 2013. Princess Bilole Rutueta again opens the Pacifica and Tonga's Medical Association's conference with a theme, Youth Today, Future Tomorrow. And the main environmental concern for Tonga and the Pacific is the issue of climate change. These are more stories later on in this bulletin. I'm Fatai Fenga'a with the details. Her Majesty the Queen Mother, Halaival Mata'aho, and Her Royal Highness Princess Filolevo Tuita this morning attends the Women's Annual September Roll Call of the Free Wesleyan Church of Tonga at the Centenary Church in Nukalofa. Linda Filiai was there and filed this report. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Halai Valamata'aho and Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafle Opilolevo Tuita during officiated at the September Royal Call at the Centenary Church in Nukualofa. The September Royal Call is an annual program for all the women of the Free Wesleyan Church of Tonga to answer their call in church. Attending today's September Royal Call program were women from different walks of life from different Free Wesleyan Church denominations in Tongatapu. This year's theme is The Bible is the Light for Life. In a remark from the Queen Mother, Halai Valumata'aho, she emphasized the importance to love God with all your heart and obey His commandments. I wish you all the best for this September Royal Call and we should make sure that we all have eternal life in heaven. We should also believe and love our survivor, Jesus Christ, and hope the Holy Spirit will encourage us to read the Bible and obey His commands. In the meantime, Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafle Opilolevu Tuita represents the call of her old district answering the September call. However, these are the views of the elderly women of the church about this year's September Royal Call. Today is very important to join this year's Royal Call. I thank God that I'm still alive and participate in the singing group from our village. Our God loves us and He will give us eternal life if we obey Him. I am so happy with today's September Royal Call and all the program is spiritual because almost everyone had prayed for today's successful program. Meanwhile, Simla September Royal Call for the Free Church of Tonga, Church of Tonga and the Constitutional Church of Tonga was also held today in the main churches in Nukualofa. Although 2 million young people living in the Pacific region boasts a challenge for Tonga and its neighboring countries, however, youth are the most valuable resources for any countries as they are the future. This was stressed by Her Royal Highness Princess Bilolevo Tuita in her opening remarks of the Pacifica Medical Association and Tonga Medical Association's combined conference, which is currently underway in Nokalofa. Kalolaine Tonglava was there and filed this report. The Tonga Medical Association 69th, together with the Pacifica Medical Association 16th Regional Conference, is held in Nokalofa. The theme, Youth Today, Our Future Tomorrow. In the opening remarks from the guest of honor, Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafle Opilolevu Tuita, she stressed that the theme for the conference relates directly to the youth in Tonga. The theme is re relevant to Tonga and the region. Across the Pacific region, it is estimated that there are two million young people between 15 to 24 years. Here in Tonga, 20% of our population is estimated to be between 15 and 24 years old. This is a challenge to countries who are facing economic hardship, with economies that are struggling to provide employment opportunities, education systems that are struggling to provide education and skills to prepare young people for exciting futures, and the increase in disparities between young people in urban areas and rural or outlying islands. For young people, the transition to independence creates demands on governments, 
regional agencies, donors, and the wider communities, including health systems. The two million young people are indeed a challenge, but are also a potentially valuable resource whom we will rely on in the future to lead our countries, our governments, businesses, and social services. If this is indeed the case, we need to act now to begin to secure the future opportunities for our youth. We have a responsibility to invest in young people during their second decade and beyond, to build on the gains achieved over the last 20 years. If young people are given the means to become better educated, healthier and employed, they are in a better position to make their communities more prosperous. In Tonga, we have made considerable progress in engaging young people and in fostering leadership skill and development. Her Royal Highness also emphasized the vital role of the people working in the health sector and also praised the good working relations between the medical associations of Tonga and the Pacifica. The health sector has a unique role in ensuring that young people are able to access health services, that they are well prepared to become good parents and that they are able to protect the health of their families and communities. I would like to finally comment on the partnership that has developed over many years between the Pacifica Medical Association and our own Tonga Medical Association. It demonstrates the best in respect, collegiality, in capacity building, and in partnership working collectively to benefit all in the region. We look forward to hearing your deliberations this week and hope you are able to take some time out to enjoy the people and the beauty of our country. During the opening ceremony of the Regional Medical Conference, the Chief Executive Officer of the Pacifica Medical Association, Mrs. Debbie Sorensen, says that the younger generation needs to be inspired to work in the health sector. Meanwhile, in the vote of thanks from the Director of Health, Dr. Sialia Kaola, he thanked Her Royal Highness for her encouragements for this conference. The Tonga Medical Association, or TMA, was established by His Late Majesty King Dalfa Ahau Dubo IV in the 1940s, with only 10 doctors as members. At present, close to 60 doctors are current members of the association with its president, Dr. Paula Vivili. Also present at last night's opening of the Regional Medical Conference includes the Honorable Minister of Health, Lord Tuyafitu, the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, Lord Baya, diplomatic corps, doctors from around region who are members of the Pacifica Medical Association. This regional meeting will run until Friday. Reporting for Television Tonga News, I'm Kalolaini Tonglava. The Honorable Minister of Environment, Land, Survey, Climate Change and Natural Resources, Lord Maafu, emphasized that the major environmental concern for Tonga is the issue of climate change. He made the statement during his opening address of the Global Climate Change Alliance for the Pacific Small Island States Regional Meeting on Climate Change at the Scenic Hotel at Fuamoto this morning. Anasiu Falekano attends the program and filed of this report. Climate change experts from nine developing countries in the region come together to discuss various ways that developing countries, Tonga included, can cope with the impacts of climate change. Not only that, but they also address the vital role of donor partners in helping with the problem. In the opening address, the Honourable Minister says the main challenge for Tonga are the limited funds that the government put aside to fund various projects aiming to stop the impacts of climate change. This meeting demonstrates the continued support of our development partners in recognising that access to funding is the most crucial aspect to enhancing our national capacity for coping with climate change. Intensifying impacts and consequences of climate change events mean that developing nations are forced to stretch their limited resources within their budgets and financial capabilities. We are also required to consider various non-conventional measures 
in which to effectively plan and implement financing mechanisms so that our most desperate needs in times of emergencies and disasters are actually met. Meanwhile, the director of the climate division from the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, or SPREP, Dr. Natatua Prescott, says that Tonga struggles with their attempt to reduce the consequences of climate change. What is different is that we are working with the governments of the, of the Pacific to find out how can the money channel directly to them and then they um, implement their priorities on, on climate change. As the climate change, there are new invasive species that um, come into to Tonga through various um, uh, ways that they uh, destroy the, the crops, the, the birds, uh, the, 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 the biodiversity uh, in Tonga. So we are also assisting Tonga there. But we also have a big waste management project uh, here in, in Tonga. Uh, but it, in the island of, of Baba'u. Attending the one-week program are representatives from the European Union, Secretariat Pacific Regional Environment Program, or SPREP, and other donor partners. Issues and problems with deportees will be submitted to the 2013-14 United Nations Assembly. The statement was made by the People's Representative for Tantapu Constituency 5, Isaac Eke, during deliberations in Parliament. Galalaina Tonglava reports. The issue was brought to Parliament during the submission of reports on members' parliamentary visits to their respective constituency. According to the People's Representative for Tongatapu No. 5, Isaac Eke, the submission of the issue on deportees to the United Nations was brought up by him and representatives from Tonga during an international conference in Bangkok focused on a theme called People and Development. He said it's a 10-year program aiming to raise awareness of, on everyday issues affecting the people. It involves health, education and migration. Mr. Eke told members of the House that no one raised the problem concerning deportees except for Tonga's representatives. He reiterated that the concern was based on why people are being deported to places where they were born. After all, they were legally staying in those countries. Mr. Eke said other issues related to the new Millennium Development Goals was also discussed during the Bangkok conference. The parliament continued their deliberation and passed the report of the Tongatapu No. 8 on his parliamentary visit to his constituency. The parliamentary discussions are broadcast live on Radio Tonga 1 and Radio Tonga 2 or FM 90. The second session of the appeal cases for this year, 2013, has been cancelled and all appealed cases are moved for next year's first session, which are usually conducted in February. This was dated from an announcement made by the Chief Justice Michael Scott saying that owing to abolition and loss without replacement of vital positions within the Supreme Court Registry, they therefore decided to cancel the session of the Court of Appeal. This comes after the issue was raised in Parliament from the People's Representative for Tontapu No. 8, Sione Tayone, who told the House this is the first time such incidents has occurred. Mr. Tayone told the House during yesterday's celebrations that the problem is due to many of the staff members in court leaving their post without any replacement. Meanwhile, the Justice Minister, Clave Oud, says that work is currently underway towards the matter. The minister says that one of the reasons for the cancellations of tour bill cases was due to the removal of the budget for the chief registrar by the Ministry of Finance. He also told the parliamentarians that only the appeal cases cancelled, with the rest of the other cases are still ongoing in court. The fishermen and related stakeholders in the sea cucumbers industry have collected around 4 million paanga in the month of September alone. This was during an exceptional period for the harvesting of sea cucumber approved by Cabinet earlier this month. The exceptional period approved by Cabinet includes harvesting, processing and exporting of sea cucumbers. The CEO of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries and Food, Losaline Maasi, reveals this in an exclusive brief radio and television Tonga. At present, reports outline that about 4 million paanga have been injected to the local fishermen and related stakeholders. 
This was a great success, as this is one of our major objectives to ensure that revenue from each respective sector of the ministry has been generated straight to the locals. The CEO of the Ministry of Fisheries says about 12 licenses have been issued during this exceptional period, where a majority of the licenses were granted for businesses in Nontapu, with two licenses each for the islands of Hapai and Mama'o. I hope that by the end of this special season on September 30th, which is next Monday, all harvesting and processing of the sea cucumbers will not exceed the deadline given by the authorities, as that will be pronounced illegal. The usual season for harvesting sea cucumbers are the months of April till Midia. The product is being exported to several Asian markets for food seasoning and others. The Kolomotua Clinic was fortunate to receive donations of various renovation tools and equipment from the Rotary Club of Sydney, Australia. This is the club's first assistance to Tonga. Fonoave Koso has the details. The Rotary Club of Sydney yesterday presented a container of equipment and tools to help renovate the clinic, including its fence. This assistance was made possible through Sydney Rotary's long-standing ties with its local counterpart. Tonga's Rotary Club leader, Dr. Amanaki Fakakovikaitao, says the assistance was requested firsthand by the Ministry of Health. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the leader from Australia's Rotary Club, Bruce Overton, says the assistance was initiated last year in a special visit to the kingdom. The club has done international projects before, but not lately, and but never in Tonga. Because when we came last year, two of the members who are builders came with me, and we had a look, and we felt we loved the feeling of Tonga, and we thought, yes, we're going to do this project. So the donation is estimated at around 35,000 Australian dollars. So we've raised money, and we have put a lot of materials in the container, I uh, will still need to buy some more materials, but we're going to use all of that to rebuild the clinic and make it to a nice condition. The renovation works towards the clinic is to be completed by next Friday. And that's the local news. Pacific is up next.